Water. It's everywhere. There's not a living thing that doesn't depend on it, including humans. It's a source of recreation. It's a matter of survival. It helps our food to grow. It's home to a host of living creatures. It's constant and predictable, yet it's vulnerable too. Have you ever thought about how much you depend on clean water and what you would do if it didn't flow from your tap? Have you ever thought about what threatens the quality of your drinking water supply and how to protect it? Conservation authorities have been considering these questions for decades and work with municipal partners and landowners to protect and manage watersheds across Ontario. Less than 1% of the Earth's supply of water is fresh or available for drinking. Because Ontario is surrounded by it, we tend to take it for granted, making us among the world's top water wasters. We don't have an unlimited supply of water. The water we take from lakes, rivers, streams, and underground aquifers must always be replenished through its natural cycle. When we take water from sources faster than they can replenish themselves, we face shortages and experience bans. If we continue to take more water than nature can supply, we will face serious, long-term supply shortages. Almost one-third of municipalities in Ontario with water supply systems reported shortages over the past 10 years. And this number is increasing as populations increase. Some municipalities are predicting serious water shortages in the next decade. We need to be aware of how much water we take out of the system now, so we have enough for later. Almost three-quarters of the people who live in Ontario rely on water that is drawn from surface sources, such as the Great Lakes and the Ottawa River. The rest of us get our drinking water from underground sources, or aquifers. If you live in a town or city, there's a good chance the water you drink goes through several treatment processes before it reaches your home. Municipal water treatment systems in Ontario are rigorously tested and monitored to ensure they're doing a good job of turning raw water into safe, reliable drinking water. However, the job would be a lot easier and the whole system would have an added layer of protection if the water at the start was as clean as possible. And what about the two million residents in Ontario who live outside of towns and cities and who don't have municipally treated drinking water? For people who draw water from untreated surface and underground sources, protecting source water may be the only barrier preventing them from consuming contaminated drinking water. So how can we be sure everyone's drinking water is clean and safe? Let's start by looking at where our drinking water comes from. Does it fall from the sky? Is it drawn from a lake? Or is it pumped from far beneath the ground we walk on? Actually, it comes from all of these sources, each one being linked through an ongoing process called the water cycle. The water cycle is as old as the earth. When water vapor collects in clouds, it falls back to the earth as rain and other forms of precipitation. This water flows into surface water sources such as streams, lakes, rivers, and oceans. Some of this water also percolates through the ground. It seeps down through layers of soil and rock crevices until it eventually reaches a saturated zone of interconnected spaces within sediment and rock known as an aquifer. Water contained underground is called groundwater in areas where the aquifer meets the Earth's surface, such as at marshes, streams, lakes, and oceans, groundwater is discharged. Through evaporation, water vapor is then returned to the atmosphere. Rain, snow, and other forms of precipitation will form again and fall back to Earth to start the cycle once more. There is no new water on Earth. It is recycled over and over. Once precipitation lands on the Earth, it is affected by the watershed it enters. Every inch and acre of land is part of a watershed, which is an area of land that drains into a common body of water, such as a river, lake, stream, ocean, or pond. Watersheds include all water and water-dependent land features, 
like wetlands, forests, towns, even humans and other living things. They are different shapes and sizes and cut across the man-made boundaries of municipalities, provinces, and even countries. There are many pollution-causing activities that occur within our watersheds and threaten the quality of our water. Some of these activities are easy to pinpoint and fix, while others are more difficult. Some pollution comes from industrial discharges, including industrial effluents, spills and leaks of industrial chemicals. Some pollution comes from municipal wastewater effluents, from septic systems, from landfill site leachate, and from wastes located on existing and abandoned mining sites, and from leaking underground oil and gas storage tanks. Other sources of pollution come from activities that are more difficult to identify and control and generate up to half of all water pollution. This is pollution caused by runoff in both urban and rural settings. Runoff occurs when rain flows over impermeable man-made surfaces such as buildings, streets, parking lots and other paved areas and also over the land, especially freshly cleared land. Runoff carries with it the contaminants it picks up along the way like spilled oil or gas, sediment, chemicals, metals, road salts, animal feces, fertilizers, pesticides and bacteria and nutrients from livestock. Runoff enters the water supply by soaking into the ground or flowing directly into a ditch, stream, river or lake. There are also other ways contaminants can be introduced into our water sources. Abandoned wells provide direct inlets for contaminants to enter our groundwater supply. Bacterial and petroleum products come from recreational boating. Even acid precipitation and other forms of air pollution affect our sources of water. So how do we protect our sources of water? By evaluating and monitoring the state of our land and water resources and developing solid science-based planning to protect and restore them. Watershed management is not new in Ontario. Conservation authorities, municipalities, landowners and other stakeholders have been involved in managing our watersheds for years. It is only as a result of the Walkerton water tragedy in 2000, however, that drinking water protection came to the full attention of the public. Seven people died and more than half of the town's population became sick after a heavy rain washed E. coli bacteria into Walkerton's municipal water system. After the incident, the provincial government established a public inquiry and appointed Justice Dennis O'Connor as the inquiry commissioner. Justice O'Connor was given the task of finding out what caused the Walkerton tragedy and how he might avoid a similar experience from occurring in another Ontario town. The Walkerton inquiry made a number of recommendations to the provincial government, including a call for a multi-barrier water management approach, with source protection being the first step. Although most elements of the multi-barrier approach have been in practice in Ontario for many years, it hasn't been recognized as a formal system. The multi-barrier approach includes taking actions to prevent contamination of our sources of water, using adequate water treatment and distribution systems, water testing and training of water managers. Justice O'Connor felt we were relying too much on treatment and not enough on protecting water at the source. He concluded that source protection is one of the most effective and efficient means of protecting Ontario's drinking water and called it the first line of defense. He also made 22 recommendations related to source protection planning, including the need for source protection plans to be developed and implemented locally for every watershed in Ontario. This is where conservation authorities come in. There are 36 conservation authorities across Ontario. Most of them were created over 50 years ago to protect and manage Ontario's watersheds. Conservation authorities are known for their stewardship of our rivers, lakes and streams through the development and delivery of comprehensive science-based programs. Today, through community involvement and partnerships with municipalities, provincial and federal governments, landowners, agricultural and rural organizations, environmental groups, businesses and residents, Conservation authorities are striving to make sure everyone in your community is involved in source protection planning for your watershed. What is a source protection plan? Source protection plans represent an agreement among the people and municipalities of a watershed about the ways to protect water quality and quantity. They look at land uses and activities across a watershed 
then assess the impacts on source water. Source protection plans include information, such as the physical characteristics of the land and population distribution. They include technical data, an inventory of water resources, threats, and issues. They also identify the location, size, and boundaries of source water areas and assess vulnerable areas. Source protection plans evaluate what actions can be done to ensure we have an adequate supply of clean water. In short, these plans consider what areas need to be protected, how to prevent new threats to source water, and how to reduce existing threats. When it comes to collecting data and scientific information for source protection plans, we're not starting from scratch. Many conservation authorities and municipalities have already done a lot of the research needed for source protection planning, such as groundwater studies and water quality analysis. Source protection plans are an invaluable tool for every municipality as it goes about the important job of protecting the health of its residents and promoting growth in an economically sustainable, environmentally responsible way. Because of the important role these plans play in the future of our urban and rural areas, it is critical that they are comprehensive, transparent, cost-effective, and fair. With continued pressure on our water supply sources, and increased opportunity for contaminating activities in our watersheds, it is more important than ever to prevent pollution from entering our water sources. Success requires cooperation from the government, industry, local municipalities, conservation authorities, and individuals. It doesn't matter if you live among the farmlands of southwestern Ontario, along the banks of the St. Lawrence River, or in the magnificent north. We all share an interest in Ontario's drinking water supply. Because in our world of interconnecting watersheds, everyone lives downstream of somebody else. Let's work together now to guarantee all of Ontario has enough clean drinking water for generations to come. <laughs>